The addition of pickups to acoustic guitars had finally given jazz guitarists the volume they needed to stand out when playing with a full band in a dance hall, and they finally could play solos like their bandmates and be heard by the audience now they were plugged into an amplifier and speaker. But they quickly found out that there were still limitations to this, as the louder the amplifiers got, the more the guitarists started to suffer from feedback, the loud, uncontrollable howling and screeching caused by a loudspeaker causing the flexible top of the guitar to vibrate in sympathy, creating a feedback loop that rendered the guitar unplayable. Some jazz guitarists moved to the style of acoustic guitar called an arch top that was less susceptible to feedback, but even these were limited in how loud they could get. Among the people who realised that the solution to this problem may be to make the guitar body solid was legendary jazz guitarist and amateur electronics enthusiast Les Paul. Well known as an innovative guitarist and recording engineer, he experimented with attaching an archtop guitar neck to a solid piece of wood fitted with handmade pickups and a rudimentary vibrato bridge to create what he affectionately called the log. Although it lacked the rich harmonic sound of the traditional jazz guitar, it still had a serviceable sound and could be played much louder without the feedback issues that reduced the usability of arch tops or acoustic guitars with pickups. Les Paul took his guitar to the legendary Gibson Company, who were already known as the leading jazz guitar manufacturer and pioneers of electric jazz guitars like the ES-150 Charlie Christian model that's generally recognised as taking electric guitars mainstream. Sadly, Gibson didn't see a market for such an instrument and were worried it would harm their reputation as makers of fine handcrafted instruments, so declined to work with him on the production of his solid body guitar. One person who was interested in Les Paul's experiments was an electrical engineer in California named Leo Fender, who was gaining a reputation for building public address systems and guitar amplifiers based on the radio equipment he was repairing and modifying at his small workshop. Fender realised that there was a market for a cheap, loud and more durable instrument that could be used by the small bands playing in the dance halls and roadhouses that by the 1940s were now popular places for people to socialise. Sadly, Les Paul didn't have faith in Fender's ability to start a guitar building company given he had no experience with instrument manufacture and wasn't even a guitarist. But Fender was determined to design and produce a solid body guitar that could be built cheaply and efficiently for the mass market. In 1950, Fender released the revolutionary Fender Esquire, very quickly followed by the double pickup variant, known briefly as the Broadcaster, before a lawsuit from a rival manufacturer saw it renamed the Telecaster. Unlike the archtop jazz guitars that were the norm until now, the Telecaster didn't require skilled woodworkers and luthiers to be constructed, and was much more suited to mass production. The bodies were cut on bandsaws from slabs of inexpensive American-sourced woods, and the necks were simply bolted onto the body via four large screws and a back plate. Simple electronics to control the sound of the guitar were easily fitted into bodies that had channels routed out of them for this purpose that could then be hidden by an opaque plastic scratch plate. The Telecaster and Esquire revolutionised guitar playing and were an instant success, with the Telecaster staying in constant production from 1950 right through to today, and remaining one of the most popular guitars to own for guitarists of all genres. Seeing the success Fender was having and the impact he was having on their own sales, Gibson revisited their conversations with Les Paul and quickly moved to design their own solid body guitar in collaboration with him. In June 1952, the Gibson Les Paul made its public debut and in keeping with Gibson's reputation as makers of high-end instruments, it retained its glued-in neck, used expensive mahogany and rosewood woods for the neck and body, was fitted with a hand-carved maple top and was finished with metallic gold paint to emphasise its quality and heritage. This made the guitar significantly more expensive to produce and therefore buy than Fender's mass-produced rival, and the Les Paul would undergo several redesigns over the following decade as Gibson struggled to sell their guitar to all but their wealthiest customers. While the modern Telecaster on display in the exhibit has changed very little since the originals were released in the 1950s, the Les Paul has seen numerous changes and models over the years. The model on display is a rare Les Paul recording model from the 1970s that featured special pickups and electronics to maximise the instrument's sonic abilities in the clinical environment of a recording studio. This model of the guitar that bore his name became Les Paul's preferred choice for all his live and recorded work from its release in 1971 until his death in 2009.